So when I mention graffiti or taggers, you might think of something like this. Or possibly something like this. And when I mention to people that I'm interested in graffiti and that for the last six to nine months of my life I've been creating it, a lot of people, for some odd reason, think I'm going to end up like this. And ah. what's more is that not only did I do it in my free time, but it was something that I brought to an academic setting, which is crazy. So this is kind of what I get. I either get the gang side, I get the random tagger side, but I don't honestly get a lot of people thinking, oh, that's art. In reality, graffiti artists span all social, social economic situations, all races, all cultures, all nationalities. It's one of the most diverse groups I've seen so far. And the art that they create also reflects this. So when I decided to do it, one of the biggest questions I get is, is it art, is it vandalism, and where can we draw the line? The biggest two things that I found when researching was permission and intent. Was the intent behind the art to create or was it to destroy? Or is, do you have permission? Is it something that you were allowed to do or is it something that you just kind of ran out and did? So let's say Picasso comes and he tags your house, right? Okay, so once you get over the fact that Picasso's alive and in your front yard, would you consider it art or would you consider it vandalism? And then after that, what if I took a million dollar piece of art from the Smithsonian or some other large art institution and I put it on a wall in the city somewhere? Would it be the same million dollar piece of art or would it then become vandalism? I like y'all. <laughs> okay, so the most people, the people who are really the most interested in it are those who create it and those who are out to destroy it. Most random people on the street will see it and they'll be like, oh, that's cool, but they don't really stop and really consider the artistic value of it or, whoa, why, why did they make this? What was the motivation behind it? And graffiti started from humble beginnings. It started with cornbread and tagging. And the first guy to ever tag was actually from Philadelphia. It's a common misconception that it started in New York. Um, New York is where it diffused mostly because of the subways the subway system, but it all started with this guy, Cornbread. He was an interesting child. He got the name Cornbread because he was in the lunch line one day, and he was like, oh, I don't like this bread. I like my grandma's Cornbread. And they started calling him that, and so he started writing his name all over the place. And everybody was like, who's this guy, Cornbread? And that's how graffiti began. In my journey as an artist, I wanted to start with tagging, but then I wanted to move on to other art forms. So I wanted to do throw-ups. And they're not called throw-ups because they look like bleh. They're called that because they're easy to throw up on a wall. They're easy to make, and they usually only use two colors. One's usually a fill color, and the other one's the outline color. And my real goal as an artist is to work up to wild style. Wild style is something that's like a fingerprint for an artist. It's not the same between each artist, and it has more interlocking letters, they use different colors to contrast, and usually it's illegible. So in looking at different artists, I found a few that I was really interested in, and one of them was Vinny. She really reflects the Parisian culture, and as far as that, feminism, which is really big in Paris, if you guys didn't know. And also, I love the fact that she has afros, you know, it's really nice. But she also combines a lot of different styles. She has the art, mural piece of it, but also within the afros, she uses little bubble letters, which are the throwies, as I said before. Banksy is another artist that really interested me. I call him the graffiti unicorn because no one knows who this guy is, but everybody's seen all of his like art. You'll see it on Twitter, you'll see it on Tumblr, and you're like, oh, that's cool, but nobody knows who this guy is. And somehow he's worth 20 million, that's his net worth. How he gets the money, I don't know, but yeah. So really, <laughs> when I started this project, I kind of went with what was around me. I was inspired by the art that I would see like growing up. You know, I always kind of thought it was cool, but I never really had a chance to look into it, like the actual stuff behind it. And it really didn't hit me how much of a cultural impact the graffiti made until about a week ago, I was on Twitter. And the hashtag, you ain't from Houston if, and yes, my generation's going far with that grammar. Um, 
it was trending, and every time I was scrolling or whatever, beyond all the stuff about Bissonette and the horrible pavement, there was all these things about the be someone over there on 45. And for anybody in Houston, you know, if you say I'm passing by the be someone, you know exactly where it is. So um, for me, I was just like, wow, this can have a huge impact. Like, you're not from Houston if you've never seen it, if you've never posted it, if you've never tried to get a picture of it, if you've never wondered how in the world someone got up there to make that. And just to think that something as simple as that, because there are a lot more complicated pieces in Houston, can make such a big impact was really huge for me. Um, also, I'm into marketing. You know, they talked about how I'm going to Howard and stuff. But I found out that graffiti had a marketing aspect to it, and I was like, whoa. So um, when you think about it, graffiti is something that's on a wall. It's just like any other advertisement, any other billboard, anything like that. But some artists have taken it and made it not only something that they enjoy and love to do, but they've turned it into a brand. Shepard Ferry is one of those people. He took the Andre the Giant sticker, Actually, he was walking around in town, and he was seeing all the different billboards and other advertisements and seeing how they told him to obey, to buy this, drink this, go here, have fun over there. And he felt like they were all telling him to obey. So he took Andre the Giant, who was massive, and he made the basic sticker, which evolved into a poster, and then he turned that into Obey clothing line. So if you've ever seen your kids walking around with the Obey, that's what it is. And so it just really amazed me that somebody could take something so small and make it into something much larger. And he's also responsible for the Obama change poster, if you guys have ever seen that. That's him, too. So, of course, as an artist, you know, I wanted to create it as well as to look at other people's stuff. So I went in my garage, and I started spray painting just random stuff. I decided to start with tagging, and then I decided to try to move up to throwies and wild style and try my own hand at it and try to make my own style. And, you know, I kind of thought it was just going to be easy, that I was just going to go in there and be like, Shh. Graffiti Picasso, but nah. And so <laughs> um, it was really interesting to see and to try it myself, and I gained a real respect because that be someone, someone had to go up there, hang upside down when 45 traffic, y'all know 45 is always backed up. Somebody had to do that and spray paint upside down, and I know me trying to do it right side up, I'm like, eh. So to think someone did that gave me a real respect for the people who do it. And my class, shout out to 2015, um, I decided to do something for my class. As you guys saw the last TED Talk about everyday leadership and how small things can make a big difference, a senior in my class decided to take that to challenge. And he went around asking people, what changes would you like to see here at challenge? And a lot of people were saying, oh, I didn't think my opinion mattered. And to me, that was like, wow, because these weren't only like, underclassmen, not that their opinion doesn't matter, but these were like upperclassmen, people who've been here three, four years thinking, my opinion doesn't matter. And to me, that kind of was like, wow. So what I did was I took every senior, I thought about something that either defined them, something that they were known for in the class, and I turned it into their own little graffiti art pieces. So each one reflects each senior, just to kind of show them that you matter. Somebody knows something about you, like, oh, and the reactions I got, guys, I'm telling you, it was like kids in a candy store. And also, when you get good at anything, you start getting asked to do stuff. So prom season rolled around, guys, and <laughs> your sons are not artistic at all. I hate to let y'all know. But um, so I started getting a lot of requests. They're like, OK, OK, can you like, let me, let me talk to you right quick. Let me talk to you real quick. OK, can, can you do this poster for me? And I was like, OK, sure. And I started doing these different posters, and it was fun. It wasn't something that was really work for me. It was something that I enjoyed, and I enjoyed being able to help somebody else through it. Also, all these lovely little TEDx art pieces you see around, that's me and some other people. But um, <laughs> I had some help from my lovely seniors, but most of the pieces you see around are something that I created. So over the course of this whole project TEDx thing, I learned a lot. And it was more than just going in my garage to just try to spray paint some stuff. I learned, like, Small things matter so much, and we often overlook them. We often think, oh, if we're not doing something huge, if we're not Beyonce, if we're not going out just doing amazing things in the community and stuff, that we're not making a difference. However, everyone has an impact on the world. Whether it's you sitting here turning oxygen into carbon dioxide or whether you decide to do something bigger is up to you. It's not really a question of if you'll change the world, but how will you impact the world? Thank you. <laughs>